a woman flees from her abusive husband and goes to a church where she is promised a better life for her and her daughter. But once there, she discovers shocking things about this church and Pastor Donija that makes her believe that she made a terrible mistake. Once you enter this church's compound, you're not allowed to leave. Amani discovers the shocking truth about the a thousand women pregnant with Pastor Donija's so-called holy seed. She stumbles upon secrets. Women vanish, children disappear, and the truth is buried deeper than anyone dares to dig. Will Amani find a way out before it's too late? Or will she become just another forgotten victim of a terrifying cult? Join us in this story as we find that out. Amani stood at the bus stop holding her daughter's tiny hands. The old suitcase at her feet contained all she had left after fleeing from her abusive husband. As the bus pulled away, leaving her in a desolate place she had never known, Amani's heart pounded with uncertainty. She had no idea where to go or what to do next. All she did was pray for a miracle. As the bus station grew quieter, a van pulled up. Three well-dressed women stepped out, their faces filled with compassion as they approached Amani. Sister, are you all right? One of them asked, her voice soothing, We couldn't help but notice you and your little one here. Are you waiting for someone? Amani hesitated, unsure whether to trust them, but their warmth and concern melted her hesitation. She explained her situation briefly, not wanting to burden strangers with her troubles. The women exchanged glances before one of them smiled brightly. We can help you, she said. My name is Sister Rachel and this is Sister Gloria and Sister Angela. And we come from the beautiful church of Pastor Adonija. Our pastor has a mission to help women like you. Come with us and you'll have a well-paying job, a place to stay and a good life for your daughter. Amani was relieved and with nowhere to go, she accepted their offer not knowing that she was stepping into a nightmare. Amani and her daughter Waridi were escorted in the old van which had three women, two with children, all looking lost as she felt. As the van drove away, Amani glanced at her daughter who had fallen asleep at her lap. The journey took hours, wending through dense forests and along dirty roads that seemed to lead to nowhere. Amani noticed how the landscape changed, becoming more isolated with every mile. Where exactly is this place? Amani asked, feeling a twinge of unease. Don't worry, Sister Rachel assured her. It's a bit isolated, but that is to protect the vulnerable from the outside world. You'll understand when you see it. The van finally stopped in front of a tall gate guarded by men in black uniforms. The gate opened slowly, revealing a large compound surrounded by high walls. The sun had fully set by now and the compound was lit with dim lights casting strange shadows on the buildings. Amani could see a large church at the center, flanked by several buildings. And then suddenly, the van doors opened and a man who had been introduced as Brother Gideon stepped out, gesturing for the women to follow. Amani and the others hesitated for a moment, then they exited the van one by one. As they walked towards the entrance of the compound, another man wearing a stern expression approached them. He was tall, with a face hardened by years of service to Pastor Donija. Amani noticed his intense gaze as he surveyed each woman. Welcome sisters. He began in a voice that was as cold as it was commanding. Before you enter, there are a few rules you must understand. In this place, worldly possessions are not allowed. You must surrender all your phone, bank cards, money, and any other items you have with you. These things are not allowed here. 
Amani's heart sank. Her phone was her everything. Her last means of reaching out for help if things went wrong. Her bank cards and money were all she had to start a new life to provide for herself and her daughter. Mercy, one of the women turned to Amani, her eyes wide with fear. We have to give them everything, she whispered, her voice trembling. Brother Gideon, who had been watching the exchange, stepped closer. There is no need to worry, he said, his voice slightly softer though still authoritative. All your needs will be provided for here. Pastor Donija teaches that relying on material wealth hinders spiritual growth. Trust in him and you will want nothing. Reluctantly, Amani reached into her bag and handed over her phone, her bank cards and the cash she had left. The other women did the same, their faces a mix of fear and resignation. Brother Gideon collected the items with an expression of satisfaction and then he said with a smile, This is the Lord's sanctuary. Welcome to your new home. Amani and the other women were then taken to a communal hall where food was laid out on long tables. The other women and children ate hungrily but Amani felt too nervous to eat much. Waridi, however, devoured her food, her innocent joy bringing a brief smile to Amani's face. After that, Amani and the women were led inside the women's dormitory, a long, narrow building with rows of beds lined up against the walls. The room was filled with women of various ages, some whispering quietly, others staring blankly into the distance. The atmosphere felt heavy. You'll sleep here, Amani, Sister Rachel instructed, pointing to an empty bed and your daughter will be taken to the children's dormitory. Amani felt a sharp pang of anxiety as she watched her daughter being escorted to the children's dormitory. She wanted to be with her to keep her safe but the rules were strict. She was told she would see Waridi in the morning. As Amani lay down on the hard mattress, staring up at the ceiling, the events of the day replayed in her mind. She tried to convince herself that everything would be fine, that this was a new beginning, but deep down, a voice whispered that she had made a very terrible mistake. The next day, Amani awoke to the sound of a bell ringing. The dormitory was already buzzing with activity as women dressed in plain white gowns moved quickly, preparing for something. A stern old woman whose name was Great Sister Sarah walked around the dormitory urging everyone to get up. Morning prayers are in five minutes, don't be late. She barked. Great Sister Sarah was the eldest among all the women in the church. She had served Pastor Donija for years and he trusted her and everyone was expected to obey and respect Great Sister Sarah. Amani hurriedly dressed and followed the crowd to the church. The inside was grand with high ceilings and large windows, but it felt cold. The men were sitting in front of the church and the women after the men. Pastor Donija stood at the front, his presence commanding and intimidating. His voice boomed through the church as he led the prayers, calling upon the Lord's protection for the day ahead. As the prayers ended, Pastor Donija's gaze swept over the congregation, his eyes lingering on Amani for a moment longer than she was comfortable with. Amani quickly looked away, but the unease she had felt the night before returned stronger than ever. After the prayers, all women and men went into the dining hall for breakfast except Pastor Donija who went straight to his chambers. The smell of freshly baked bread and steaming porridge wafted through the air. The women were instructed to line up in an orderly fashion and serve the men of the compound first. 
The men were seated at long tables, their demeanor dignified as if their status required them to be catered to. The women moved quickly among them, placing tables of food in front of each man, ensuring that they were attended to before anyone else was allowed to eat. Amani's hands trembled slightly as she served, her eyes flickering nervously around the room. The dining area buzzed with the clinking of cutlery and sounds of men laughing happily as Amani finished serving the men their breakfast. Exhausted but relieved, Amani finally took a seat in one of the empty tables eager to eat. She had worked hard and her stomach growled with hunger. Just as she was about to take her first bite, a sharp voice cut through the room. Sister Amani! shouted great sister Sarah, her voice echoing off the walls. You cannot eat before the men have finished eating. This is a sacred rule. Amani's hand froze mid-air and she looked up in surprise. Great sister Sarah's eyes were cold and serious, clearly showing her disapproval. Amani looked around, her face flushed with embarrassment. Sister Rachel, a senior woman in the compound, quickly approached, her expression one of both shock and apology. I am so sorry, great sister Sarah. I must have forgotten to remind Amani of the rules. Great sister Sarah turned and looked at sister Rachel. Why have you not taught Amani the rules? This is unacceptable. Take her for a walk and explain the rules and regulations to her. It is very important that she understands her place here. Amani followed sister Rachel outside, her face full of embarrassment. They walked in silence and Rachel stopped under a large leafy tree. Sister Amani, she began, her voice turned. I understand that you are new here, but you must follow the rules without question. Men here come first, okay? Amani, still confused and a bit frightened, couldn't help but ask, Why do the men always eat first? Why are they always first? It doesn't seem fair. Sister Rachel's eyes narrowed. Here, we do not question anything. Pastor Donija's ways are divine and meant to guide us. It is not for us to question, but to obey. Pastor Donija's knows what is best for us. Amani felt a knot tighten in her stomach. She had hoped that joining this church could bring her and her daughter closer to safety, but she was now unsure. With doubts in her, Amani promised Sister Rachel that she would follow and obey all the rules. After the men had finished eating breakfast, the women were now allowed to eat. Amani thought she had seen it all until she went to the children's dormitory. The children's dormitory was separate from the main buildings and women were not allowed to go there to see their children, but Amani did not know this. Amani found her daughter sitting on a small bed playing with a few other children. Waridi's face lit up when she saw her mother and Amani's heart eased a little. An elder woman approached Amani with a gentle smile. I am great sister Agnes. I help take care of the children here. Waridi is in safe hands. Amani smiled back, grateful for the kindness. Thank you. I was worried. Great sister Agnes smiled with an evil smile as she said, it's natural to worry, but Pastor Donija's church takes care of its own. And now, Waredi is one of Pastor Donija's children. She is no longer your child. Amani, we are all Pastor Donija's children. You shall never ever speak to Waredi again, okay? It's the rules, and Pastor Donija's knows best. Amani left the children's dormitory confused. What did great sister Agnes mean by saying Waridi was no longer her child again? Why did this church feel like a prison? She wondered. Or maybe great sister Agnes was playing with me since her money Ukama. Amani thought to herself. Days turned into weeks and Amani began to learn more about Pastor Adonija and his so-called sanctuary. 
The women were told that Pastor Donija was a man of God, chosen by God himself to cleanse them of their sins and remove demons from their lives. But it wasn't long before Amani began to notice things that disturbed her. Some women would disappear for days, only to return looking helpless, their spirits crushed. They spoke in whispers, their eyes darting nervously, and would not talk about where they had been or what happened to them. At this time, Waridi was enrolled in the compound school, and although Amani missed her terribly, she took comfort in knowing that her daughter was being educated. Still, Amani couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The dormitory was overcrowded and the women barely smiled or spoke. At night, Amani would lie awake listening to quiet sobs of other women wondering what had brought them there. One night, as Amani was about to fall asleep, she heard a whisper from the bed next to her. It was a woman she had seen around but had never spoken to. Be careful, the woman whispered. Don't trust them. Amani turned towards the voice alarmed. What do you mean? Amani asked. The woman hesitated then spoke quietly. Wait until the lights are off and then follow me quietly. Amani felt her heart quicken but she nodded silently. Something about the woman's warning sent a chill down her spine. She had sensed that something was off about the compound from the very beginning and now her suspicions were about to be confirmed. Once the lights went out and the room was cloaked in darkness, the woman quietly rose from the bed and motioned for Amani to follow. Careful not to make a sound, Amani slipped out of the bed and padded softly across the room. Together, they crept through the dormitory and out into the cold night air, the only light coming from the moon hanging low in the sky. The woman, whose name was Naomi, led her to a secluded area behind the women's dormitory where a rusted trailer stood hidden from view. As they approached, Amani could hear faint sobbing coming from inside. This is the punishment trailer, Naomi whispered, her voice shaky. Any woman who disobeys Pastor Donija's rules ends up here. Amani's eyes widened in horror as they peeped through a crack in the trailer's door. Inside, several women sat huddled together, their faces drawn and defeated. Some had visible bruises, others bandaged, while others stared at the ground broken and silent. They are punished for speaking out or trying to leave, Naomi explained. Once you're in there, it's hard for you to come back. Most never do. Amani felt her stomach twist in fear. She had no idea that such cruelty existed within the compound. She turned to leave, but just as they were about to slip away, they heard voices approaching. Quickly, they hid behind a large bush, holding their breath as Brother Joshua and Brother Gideon approached the trailer. Their voices were low, but Amani and Naomi could still make out what they were saying. Those women who tried to escape last night, they didn't get far, Brother Joshua said, his tone grim. <laughs> they never do, Brother Gideon replied with a cruel chuckle. Pastor Donija ordered them to be buried. We can't have any troublemakers around. Amani felt a surge of panic rise in her chest. They were talking about burying women alive. Her heart pounded in her ears, but the conversation grew even darker. And what about their children? Brother Joshua asked. Taken care of. They'll be sold as sex slaves in the city. Brother Gideon responded coldly. The van's already on its way to pick them up. Amani's eyes widened in horror. Her breath caught in her throat as she watched the brothers walk away. Once the men were out of sight, Amani and Naomi slightly crept after them, their bodies tense with fear. They followed at a distance, carefully not to be seen. 
In the distance, they saw a van parked near the children's dormitory, its engines running quietly in the night. Amani's heart shattered as she saw a group of children being led to the van, their eyes wide with confusion and fear. Among them were the children of the women who had been caught trying to escape. They were being taken away to be sold. Naomi grabbed Amani's arm, her grip tight. This is what happens here. This is why we can't leave. They'll take your children and you'll be buried alive and disappear, just like the others. Amani stood frozen. The promise of a better life was a lie. This place was not a safe place. It was not a sanctuary, but a prison and she was trapped. As she watched the van drive away into the night, carrying the innocent children to a fate she could hardly bear to think about, Amani knew she had to escape. But now, the stakes were higher than ever. Will Amani finally find a way to escape in this prison of a church? What else will she discover in this church full of secrets? Join us in part 2 as we find that out. And my loves, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I drop the part 2 video. Kwaheri!